Six months ago I released a video suggesting NVIDIA's RTX was more marketing than it was any actual new technology. An in-depth follow-up came in February, reviewing a decade of NVIDIA's own research into ray tracing, which again suggested RTX branding was just that, branding, and perhaps misleading at that. Tensor cores, or the elusive RT cores, were not fundamental requirements of ray tracing. There was no new hardware being delivered, only repurposed deep learning units. Faster BVH functions are always great, but I questioned NVIDIA's implementation and effectiveness. In these videos I showed pre-RTX hardware doing real-time ray tracing, path tracing, reflections and global illumination. Demos going back at least five years and running on much less powerful hardware than we have today. The superposition benchmark from Unigine implements a dynamic global illumination system that can run in real-time at 4K on non-RTX hardware. And static global illumination has been around for quite a long time. A great example of that would be Red Dead Redemption 2, which looks fantastic and runs on console hardware. It's subjective, of course, but I wonder if Red Dead Redemption 2 doesn't look better than Metro Exodus. So along comes NVIDIA with their RTX, and using Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus, they were artificially locking away a feature we know can run on any GPU. And they were doing this in order to sell expensive, rebadged machine learning cards to gamers at a huge price premium. Though the very powerful RTX 2080 has 10 teraflops of peak FP32 performance, that's still only equal to a Vega 56 card which costs under $300. Of course it's an unfair comparison because the 2080 has slightly higher memory bandwidth plus those tensor cores, those can be put to work as well. The problem with tensor cores though is they aren't general purpose units, you can't just take a graphics shader and run it on them. RTX technologies of denoising and DLSS upscaling are attempts to find purpose for them. That's not to say tensor cores aren't powerful, they very much are, but they were not designed for graphics in mind and finding an application to fit them has been a challenge. Ray tracing is conceptually easy, but computationally difficult. It's a technology waiting 30 years for the hardware to catch up, but that's finally happening. If you've watched my earlier video, you'll know just how close we're getting. The latest page in history is this new demo from Crytek their modified CryEngine 5. They've had global illumination in their engine for years, but as with most approaches up until now, it was not dynamic. This new demo claims, and seems to deliver, real-time reflections. Real-time reflections was the big bold claim from RTX and Battlefield 5, but in this case we're not running on a $1200 GPU with proprietary systems, it's running on a sub $300 GPU released one and a half years ago. Although don't let the age of Vega 56 fool you, it has the same 10 teraflop peak FP32 compute performance as an RTX 2080, and only marginally lower memory bandwidth. In the same region of performance we also have the 1070 Ti, the RTX 2070, and GTX 1080. If Vega 56 can run this demo, then so too should these other cards with only minor tweaks. A 1660 Ti with about half the compute performance, or an RTX 2060 with not a great deal much more, might struggle depending upon the resolution. So let's take a look at the demo. Real-time ray trace reflections, that's the big claim. Right off the bat we can see volumetric environmental effects in the steam and dust. Light is blooming through it from the neon signs. And then we have our first introduction to the reflections. We're seeing blue and green light sources that otherwise aren't visible in the frame. As we continue, we can see their origins. We have reflection with a material shader on the glass to give that blurred look from the rain. So far it's all static, but here comes our hero. Already we see light acting on the fog and surrounding building, easily done in traditional rasterization. Then we see the currency exchange sign reflected in the light but we also see some other reflections. These three medical icons. As we continue on, we see they are part of the pharmacy sign across the street and not part of the scene. The camera moves the face out from the building to the drone. We now see the pharmacy sign on the other side and reflected back in those windows is the currency exchange sign we just saw. Although not quite as pretty, but this does illustrate the point. We can see this cluster of air conditioning units was reflected in the glass of the earlier scene. Now let's look at the material on the drone, the plastic and the chrome. As we fly past the currency exchange sign, we amazingly see it reflected in the chrome strut of the drone as the angle shifts. It's tiny, but this shows us the reflections are real time as the drone is a dynamic object. Here we have mirrors. The mirrors show reflection as they should in real life. But notice we also have a reflection of a puddle of water which in turn has its own reflections in them. Then to hammer home the dynamic nature of this, we get our moving drone 
inner reflection with each broken shard acting correctly. Then we see the drone in the puddles and in the door with the reflection correctly warped and even correctly displaying the dynamic lighting from the drone that's on the wall. Then we have both a moving subject in the drone and moving surfaces. The bullet shell casing scene is interesting as well. We have puddle reflections of the noodle sign, which is clear, but also very blurred reflection in the rough textured concrete that only catches the light. We even see some interactions with the shell material, although I wouldn't rush to call them perfect, they're certainly good enough for an immersive and next-gen experience. Overall, this is really a monumentally impressive demonstration. I can imagine the developers are very excited to show this off at GDC next week, and as time goes by we'll see this technique advance and we'll see it added to more engines and opened up to a wider range of consumers. One of the really big things here is the fact that it's API agnostic. That means it can use either DirectX 12 or Vulkan, but what that also means is it doesn't have to use Microsoft's DirectX R, which is wonderful for Mac and for Linux users too.